What up, everybody? I'm Dave Miranda, and this is episode 80 of Just Give Me Five. Hope you guys are doing great, continue to be amazing. We got a really awesome show lined up for you today. But if you guys caught episode 79, you saw we had none other than my man Bryce Breezy on. And let me tell you, boy, does that guy have stories, right? You know, discovering Joe Budden. You know, Joe is easily one of my favorite MCs. I know he's a podcaster, he's in media now. But when Joe raps, he raps. And he raps really, really well, you know. And so for Bryce to be the one to kickstart his career like that, doesn't get no better than that, you know what I mean? And so Desert Storm Day is working with DJ Clue. You know, the Clue mixtapes were a huge part of my childhood as well. You know, the professional one, two, three, you know, they were just classics, man. And so for him to be a part of that, that, that journey with them and everybody that they were putting out at the time, man, incredible. You know, and then the other day I went to Bars on I-95. It's a platform they have where they have artists come on and freestyle, you know, and uh, big name artists. And they came out to Phoenix from Merkham's and he's managing Merkham's. And it was spectacular, man. You know, the kid just bodied the, bodied the whole thing, you know. And, uh, you know, that's a really good look, man. So he's on the rise too, man. So shout out to him. But, uh, man, shout out to you, my brother. And make sure you guys watch episode 79. All right. But today's guest is a personal childhood radio hero from myself. We're going to talk about his early days in radio, his Y95 days, where I first discovered him in 1991, his Power 92 days as well. We're also going to talk about a charity boxing match he had with Michael Carbajal and so much more. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you, Bruce Kelly. Hi, I used to be Bruce Kelly on the radio, but now we're about to find out who I am now. So all I'm saying is just give me five. Five? Yeah, there's, there's five. My mom was on the radio back in the early 40s during okay. the Second World War in Washington, D.C. Wow. Uh, you want to see a picture? Here it is. And then when I went to military school later on, uh, when I was uh, 13, 14, uh, we had a low power FM on campus. So I got learned how to learn the equipment and all that stuff. But at the same time, I was involved in my tennis career. So that's what I did as a kid. Uh, and later played college tennis, uh, which took me away from radio. But when I transferred colleges, I had to sit out. I was on scholarship at American University for tennis. And I went, all my friends are at Virginia Tech and great party school. So <laughs> kind of like the ASU of Virginia. Okay. So um, they had major radio station, FM and also Carrier Current. So I basically started living there. I had to wait out a year because I transferred colleges and I never went back to tennis. I just didn't. I had a good eight year run and just wasn't interested anymore for whatever reasons. And then after getting little jobs while I was at Virginia Tech, I suddenly went, I, I got to dive deep into this. Mm -hmm. And that's where I ended up going to a huge market, Charlottesville, Virginia. <laughs> yeah. But you got to start somewhere and pay your dues. Right. <laughs> where? <laughs> Every station is a first day on air. Um, you got to know how everything works. Uh, my first day, I remember this. Anytime I've been in a radio station, whether I was 18 years old or in my, uh, you know, mid 60s, mm -hmm. there's something about being in that radio station, especially when I did nights. Oh. And I was an all night jock, a big powerful AM out of Richmond, Virginia, went to 10 states. And being in there, seven to midnight, or even all nights, there used to be all night disc jockeys, and that's how you broke in. It was great because there was nobody there. Yeah. And 
it was like it was magical. Right. It, the whole thing was was magical. I anywhere that I worked, regardless of management, program directors, uh, other people on the staff, um, I always, always go into a new situation, whether the thing's got uh, you know, a 20 share or a two. It's the most important radio station in the world, and it's only the only radio station anybody listens to. Mm. I learned that down in Pulaski, Virginia. I better start acting like I'm on in New York right. so I can get to New York. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, hold on. First, we got to start at KZZP. Yeah. I came in the summer of 1985. Okay. And I was there till December 1989, till they fired me for bad ratings, which was not true. That was a spin. Um, I ended up suing, won a big, uh, my contract that they had just signed me to for five years, went across the street to Y95, where they had that morning zoo thing. Nothing against Tim Hatrick or anything. You know, Glenn Beck, my old friend, was on yeah, that thing. Right. And that got kind of nasty. Uh, but we'd made up. But uh, working at Y95, well, the number one was when the ratings came out and KZZP had completely collapsed. Yeah. Zoop. Had yeah. completely collapsed. And Y95, who had never had a number to even mention, bang, goes right. to the top. They literally switch places. Right. I felt great about that. That's vindication. That's payback. But I also felt bad because I belonged there. That was my goal, was to stay on KZZP for as long as I could as long as I could hack the crappy music, right. okay? Right. I was just getting, you know. But I came to Y95, yeah. and that was great. Working for Gary Edens was fantastic. Three things I remember. Number one, the book coming out. Uh, number two. The book, okay, elaborate on that. Well, the ratings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the ratings. Oh, the Arbitron book. It oh, used to, right. uh, yeah, it used to actually come in a book. Right. Now it's just. Right. Yeah. Um, wow. Sure. And in demos and demographics. So that was yeah. that was very satisfying. But a common, uh, what was another thing? Oh, fighting Michael Carbajal. Oh, my gosh. Talk about it. Talk yeah. About it. Little hands of stone. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, ooh, ooh. Right. Actually, I ate donuts. <laughs> we, we had a ball. We had a ball. He was, that, was, that was just magic time. It was in the mall in the center court with a real ring. Wow. And Bill Mosley, the black guy on Channel 3, was yeah. that, that's Don yeah. King. I had a couple of the Cardinals there, the original Cardinals, because they were the Phoenix, the Phoenix Cardinals. Cardinals. Oh, Absolutely. yeah, I've got all that stuff. Absolutely. The one at Y95 that I really liked was we killed Bart Simpson on April Fool's Day. Wow. And we had everybody from uh, John. I, say I, I want to say I remember this, too. Well, here's the article. <laughs> we lined up all the guests we had on the show that day. Yeah. I called John McCain, and he went, oh, hell yeah, I'll do it. I'm in the Senate right now, but I got a whole thing planned. Wow. Bart was killed in a tragic skateboard accident. Uh, and, we, and Maggie, of course. It wasn't yeah. real news. Yeah, Maggie was there after a couple, and we'll have to talk about my yeah. partners. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had the, the Gordon Jump, the general manager from WKRP in Cincinnati. He was on. McCain was saying, yes, I've just approached the president on this. We're going to have a memorial in Washington, so D.C. So John McCain was a part of it? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, he was always a part of it. We always had a great time with him. Right. I dunked him in chocolate on Valentine's Day. Wow. So he was great. He, he, yeah. yeah, it was his, I met him when he was a congressman and I had his POW bracelet when I was in high school. I was dating a girl, Charlotte, whose father was a POW. Oh, wow. Plain, you know, a pilot. And I just happened to get, she went out and bought her dad's and got me one. It was John McCain, so I should have brought it in, but.
Um, yeah, yeah. He was that. That was that line of walking between celebrities yeah. and politicians to give them some air to be themselves. Right. Exactly. You know, John talked to me when he was running for president, um, and um, you know, he was always willing to play along, which was, which was great. That's awesome. Now, how did you? So, did, when you when you got there, because. From how I, re you know, was first introduced to you through through the air, it was you and Maggie. Mm -hmm. So it was it was that your original first partner? Maggie was my original partner at KZZP. Oh, okay, okay. And then we left Y95. She went back to Chicago. She was on WLS Chicago, and that was a big oh, deal, yeah, big giant deal. WLS in Chicago, yeah, yeah, nationwide yeah. station. She yeah, was on there. Sure. So brought her in, yeah. and um, we were going great. I mean, but in the end, I fucked up. Okay, and I'll get to that in a second. Mr. Edens, Gary, had to put me on ice. Then we ended up going to Power ninety, Power ninety two, uh, and I'll never forget her. Power Mouth Patty, Power Mouth Patty. was on with. Uh, I don't Power know. Mouth Patty. Power Mouth Patty. Yep, she wouldn't do birthdays. She wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, she's Jehovah's Witness. God bless her. Right. But right. no. Yeah, yeah. Maggie came back. We're having a ball. We're playing Biggie. I was at Power March of 93. Steve Smith had already talked to me. So we knew this was going to happen. I went to Baltimore for six months. Gary was paying me full contract and I was okay. working for a friend in Baltimore. Easy. I was going to be there six months and uh, I had already talked to Steve. Gotcha. Um, who's consulting another station in town? Uh, they just flipped that station to uh, um, pop, hip hop, whatever the hell it's called. I forget, 103.9 or, I mm -hmm. think I read that. Okay. Uh, but he's consulting that and uh, he's great. I love Steve. Uh, but he went off to bigger and better things from Power 92 and that would right. be hot 97 New York. Yeah. So yeah. he create okay. he took Power 92 where hip hop lives, right. boom. Wow. Yeah, so. I had great fun on that, smoking weed with uh, bone thugs on stage at the crossroads. Oh my God. Oh, I was having a ball and they're like, who's a white boy? And I <laughs> walked in with Swisher Sweets. Yeah, um, this was in the 90s. This was in, when they were yeah. right at the crossroads yeah. and all that shit. Yeah. Mac 10, all those guys. Wow. I had a great, great time with, with those guys. Just, wow. you know, nobody was scary. Nobody right. was biggie, jeez. So you, you met Biggie? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was great. California Love with uh, uh, Tupac. Uh, you know, it was just a different experience to me. The hardest thing about being retired is <laughs> figuring out what to do. Yeah. Then yeah. <laughs> kids are grown, everybody's gone. Yeah. Uh, our son lives with us. He's 23, but he'll be going soon. Okay. And um, hopefully. <laughs> it's tough on 20 year olds right now. What are you going to do? Right. The entire world is exploding. So it's that routine. It yeah. was the routine right. get up 2 30, shit, shower, shave, shampoo. Okay, get to the station by 4. Uh, have last night's prep, have, uh, and remember prep back then was mm -hmm. the Arizona Republic and USA Today mm. because you had to, you know, get local and then do the stupid Hollywood stuff, which, right. uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh it. God, I'm so glad I didn't have to deal with Kardashians. Right. <laughs> Just Jessica Hahn. <laughs> there you go. And I've got a Jessica Hahn story that I will not tell. <laughs> it's a rhythm. And I really, I started a stupid podcast, but a video podcast, but I, my heart wasn't uh, in it. Yeah. it. It just wasn't in it. And I'm okay with technical. I mean, 
After all, I went through XM when nobody knew what that was, and we had to basically make this stuff up yeah, and learn everything yeah. uh, about computer oper op uh, operation of a yeah, I mean, you major were, network. You were, you were doing like YouTube videos in like 07. Oh yeah, well, yeah, because the technology, the, uh, the cameras were smaller, and yeah. that's how you reached out once again to people. That's, right. that's right. how you did it. Plus, you could be a jerk. Management didn't, Management didn't, yeah. <laughs> didn't know <laughs> what, yeah, they, they had no idea what it was. Right. Now you can't get hired unless that's yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, we'll talk about this, as I mentioned to you on the phone, um, anybody who's ever worked with me <laughs> knows I'm eccentric, <laughs> putting it mildly. Um, but I'm just coming to realize over the past couple of years that my entire life, starting when I was a kid, um, getting abused at a Catholic school back in 1965. Uh, that kind of set me off into a completely, it eventually set me off into becoming Bruce Kelly. My name is Bruce Grimes, and I never used a name. And that was very tough for me to even say the name, and I won't go into the dynamics behind it, but it was much more easier for me to uh, um, escape it into that. Not that it wasn't really me. In fact, I'll show you a picture. It's up right now. That's me in third grade. And as you can tell, that young man eventually ended up on the radio uh, in this body. The one thing I, I do miss and that I never really had a good chance to do was talk radio. I, I did it in Fargo, but I, I hate political talk radio. I hate it. Yeah. You're going to get it. It's an old product. Um, I'm not going to sit there and tout Obama or anybody. Who cares? Make your own decision. This whole um, problem in my life, this baggage I've been carrying around, um, I did not know about. I knew I was at, out of my mind. Um, as far as the way I lived my life, hell, I mean, it was rock and roll in the 70s, 80s, nutty. Right. And um, it, going back to Gary Edens, he took me off the air. He said no. And I really didn't learn about all this since about two years ago. I went into a psychiatric hospital. Uh, a couple years ago because I, I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm tired. It's exhausting. And everything else that I've done, I'm, I'm just ex exhausted. Yeah. Okay. But I know I know there are other people going through this depression. Depression is a horrible black hole. And I'm on medication. I don't drink, I lose drugs and all that stuff. No. I've, if ever I've done enough, I've done enough. At some point you go, well, that's it. Right. That's it. Right. You know, especially after getting this thing. Okay, pacemaker. The way I've treated people, I'm not happy about. It's not that I'm giving a mea culpa or anything, but um, it, it, I just wish somebody had figured it out before, but I guess they didn't know what bipolar one was or major depressive episode or PTSD uh, or all that. I've been dealing with this, this giant crack in the middle of my head. Uh, I told you nobody really knew I was in the Army from 75 to 76. Uh, I just didn't disclose things like that. I was always happy, Mr. Upbeat Bruce Kelly. Hey, wake up! 
and but that's what people needed that's yeah. that's what i gave nothing was fake i still had to do the radio crap kcgp 104.2 why 95 please no hard rap right. what right. <laughs> right. all this stupid crap that these people think of instead of going out and shaking hands kissing babies yeah. and saying hello i'm getting off topic now but um for anybody else you have to speak up. You, you, you need to speak up for, your, for yourself. And um, even if it's just family. I forget about that sometimes. Um, that's, that's what I'm still looking for. Yes, it's a lo it's a love you get. You you just do. I have people that connect with me on social media that remember more than than I do. But Dave, while I'm here, this was not me, all me. There through all three radio stations, the support, the ensemble that I had. Steve Gross, producer, yeah. put everything together. Yeah. Um, uh, Iceman. Uh, was my Paul Schaefer, uh, Mark Davis went on to a Vegas career as Richard Cheese. Um, good Lord, um, the guy Zapolian brought me here. Um, he later left, which put me in a precarious position, but he became huge, just like Smith. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sure there's a million others, and I apologize, but it really was a group effort um yeah. and that's what was important to me that i learned from johnny carson it's not about me i'm the dope make sure you shit on me i'm the joke self-deprecating and maggie got that that's what was fun because we never faked or did anything like that so <laughs> Is that it? Four, three, two, one. Give me five. Bye-bye. Bruce, Bruce Kelly. Bruce Grimes. <laughs> Unless somebody wants to pay me. Right. And there you have it. Man, nothing but love and respect to Bruce, you know. Connected with Bruce a few years ago, I want to say in 2019 on social media, and just always been cool, man. You know, real supportive, especially when he found out about my music background. And, you know, just real supportive, man. Just a solid human being. And uh, it was just truly an honor to have him on the show. I mean, you know, I literally discovered him, like, in 1991. I think I was, like, in third grade. So, you know, just to have, to have that and then to have him on this platform, don't get no better than that, man. You know, so, man, peace and blessings to you, my brother, and everything you have going on after radio retirement you know and I just wish you the best you know and thank you again make sure you guys follow him on social media and shout out to my brother Jimmy Nelson on that camera make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel tell a friend to tell a friend all right well this was definitely one for the books I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did and until uh, next time stay tuned stay blessed stay healthy and just give me five y'all Everything you get you